Usually when I hear about saving money, the first thing that comes to my mind is how to avoid spending money. I'm sure that's the case for you too. And that's very frustrating for me because that way of thinking basically says that in order to save money, you have to miss out on something. But on top of that, it discourages you from spending money on items that would save you thousands of dollars a year because they're expensive. Now I could spend this entire video telling you just how ironic that is, but I'd rather show you what I bought that saved me over $2,000 last year. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, getting out of debt, and making more money. Let's get into this video. So I'm going in order from most expensive to least expensive, starting with these right here. These are my hair clippers that I cut my hair with. The funny thing you'll find about each item I bought that saves me money is that I bought them out of pure frustration. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. As soon as this virus hit, every barbershop around me shut down and I went literally months without a haircut. The problem with that is I like to look good, you know what I'm saying? And this lack of getting my hair cut had me looking like who did it and what for? I mean, look at this picture right here. I was rethinking my life every day, low key. Well, you know when it's bad when people that don't normally talk to you come walking up to you and they're smirking behind their mask talking about something, huh, you need a haircut. I need a haircut about disrespectful. Had me looking like All right, back up some now. You're getting a little too close. Back up some. <laughs> but even knowing all of that, I still held off on buying the equipment because it was about expensive. I mean, if you're looking at a pair of clippers that have the power and capacity to cut through my thick hair, you're looking at at least $200. And that was just one of the things I needed for my barbershop equipment. I also needed a pair of outliners and a pair of hair trimmers so I could line myself up and get my facial hair right. So the price just kept going up. And then I realized I was at two exact months without a single haircut, man. I, I was hurting bad, man. And I got to the point where I was like, I really got to think about this. And I figured, what better place to think than in the shower? Because, you know, naturally, that's where I get my best thoughts and ideas. Well, I was still pretty unsure of what I wanted to do even after I stepped out of the shower. But then I looked in the mirror. And when I did, all the overthinking I was doing came to an end. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and get this equipment. Where I get this equipment at? I can't be going out looking like this. I'm sorry. So I hit up Amazon, found what I needed and ordered everything and the rest is history. And while I was waiting on my order to get here, I was on YouTube for several hours learning how to cut my hair. This was back when everything was on delay. So whenever my clippers and my outliners finally did come, I wasted no time. You know, I was looking that rough. I didn't care if I messed up or anything. I just knew I had to do something. And I figured I'd give you some footage of me cutting my hair so you too can see me cutting the naps right off my head. And you can watch me give myself a clean lineup. Now, if you see any dandruff, just act like you didn't see it. I was supposed to edit that out the video. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like the fact that I had to drive 10 minutes to the barbershop and wait in line with like three people ahead of me, knowing good and well the barber took 30 minutes per person to cut their hair, only for me to finally get in the chair as the fourth person, pay him $20, and then drive another 10 minutes home with a semi-decent haircut. I didn't like that. That was my frustration, so I did something about it. Another frustration I had was protein shakes and smoothies with their ridiculous prices. I like to work out a lot, and something that I like to have after workout is a protein shake or a smoothie, and I spent absurd amounts of money on both of those between the ages of 18 and 23 years old. It's partially my fault because I used to get them every time I went to the gym to work out, which was four to five times a week, paying for some doggone $7 smoothies. I must have been crazy. But then I figured I'm just going to go ahead and buy myself a blender because this is getting ridiculous. $7 smoothies. They must have lost their minds. And after I did the math, I realized I could make three smoothies at home for the price I would have only gotten one for at the gym. So that $114 blender paid for itself within weeks. Which goes to show some of the things I used to mindlessly spend my money on just because I had the money for it 
was just a waste and I could have been a lot smarter with that money. I could have saved it and I could have done something more useful with that money. It makes me think about all the things that we all spend our money on without even thinking about the real amount of money that we're throwing away despite us having real financial goals that literally require us to be aware of what we spend and aware of what we save. Which brings me to my biggest financial vice of all time, food. I don't know how else to say it. I like food, bro. I like food and whether it's healthy or unhealthy, I don't care. Send it my way. I will eat it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just how I am. But there's one thing I don't like about food though. I don't like to wait on food. You know what I mean? Like when I'm hungry, I want food right then and there, which is my way of saying I've eaten out a lot. And I've especially went to a bunch of fast food restaurants in my day. I don't exactly eat light either. So if I was going to a fast food restaurant, I was looking at at least spending $10 on a good day. And I'm talking $10 on something that I definitely could have made at home for $2. And I justified it by saying, you know, it's all good. I can afford it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I make good money. Besides, I'm tired. I don't have time to cook anyways. Knowing good and well, all I did with that extra time was sit on the couch, watch a movie on Netflix and pass out on the sofa by the time I was done eating. Now that right there is just trifling. Look, let me tell you just how bad I was about this. And I know I'm telling on myself a little bit here, but I think this will help somebody out. When I first started budgeting, I gave myself $70 within my budget to spend on fast food. And just like I told you, I usually spend $10 on a meal. So that was basically seven days worth of fast food, which of course I used up within the first week of the month. Then I would justify going over that $70 limit that I set for myself by telling myself a very convincing story. I'm sure you have your vices too. I'm sure you've spent a lot of money that could have helped you already reach your financial goals, whether that was buying your first house, investing, starting your own business, or even saving up enough money so you could quit your job. And the lesson I learned from everything I just talked about is, instead of attaching myself to my temporary wants and desires like a quarter pounder with a Sprite on the side, I need to be attaching myself to my purpose and my dreams and think about the long term more. At least for me, those were the thoughts that led to actions which led to a better future. And you know what? I didn't have to sacrifice half as much as I thought I would. So if you also suffer from spending an ungodly amount of money on fast food, get yourself some pots and pans. Get yourself a George Foreman grill. That's what I have. And I'll tell you this. When I cook burgers on this thing right here, it tastes better than McDonald's. It tastes better than Wendy's. It tastes better than In-N-Out burgers. That explains why most of the time when I used to ask my parents if they could stop and get something on the way back home, they used to say, we got food at the house. See, I, I feel what they were saying now, but they, they ain't have to use that kind of attitude though, low key. But as long as we're talking about food, you can't go wrong with an air fryer or a crock pot. You can cook a whole meal in a crock pot and air fryers can save you quite a bit of time. Now, I personally haven't graduated to using crock pots just yet. I haven't quite reached that level of cookmanship if it can be called cookmanship. I'm not sure if that's a word, but if it ain't, I'm gonna make it a word today. So I've got another one for you, another frustration and money waster, and that's cable. Ever since I was in my late teens, I've always wondered why anyone in their right mind would spend all that money on cable every single month. I mean, sure, you get a lot of channels and everything, but in my experience, there's hardly ever anything good on. And when there is something good on, you have to sit through commercials that feel like they're just as long as whatever show you're watching. Nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm all about those streaming services. I'm talking Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and Disney+. Plus. Now, out of these four, I only pay for one, and it's because I'm blessed to have family members who are willing to share their accounts with me, so I paid it forward and share my Disney Plus account with them. But let's say for some reason I was paying for all four of these combined. It would still be cheaper than cable. You could pretty much watch whatever you wanted to on demand and you wouldn't really have to worry about uh, commercials on most of these platforms besides like Hulu. And you can fast forward and pause and do all that fun stuff without having to worry about the crazy high cable prices. Now normally I would go on about just how much I can't stand cable, but I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm not trying to get started tonight. But something else that streaming services did save me money on was going to the movie theater. 
I'm not really the type of person that likes to go to a lot of places, but movie theaters were an exception. I loved going to movie theaters, you know, back when life was normal. My biggest thing about movie theaters is the experience is great, but it's just overpriced. So a while ago, I made myself a mini movie theater in my living room, and honestly, it's just as good. At least that's what I tell myself so I can sleep at night. The only difference is there's less people in my living room, which I like. I went really deep into that in one of my videos about how I really like being alone and that video went so viral that it opened up an entire world of introverts who felt the exact same way I did. It was crazy. I'm not doing all that in this video, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm going to say this. If you're going to surround yourself around people, make sure that you're surrounding yourself around like-minded individuals who have similar goals and aspirations as you do and actually push you to do better. I know this might sound harsh, but when I'm around people who don't, it feels like a complete waste of time because what happens is it holds you back from where you're trying to be and that's not conducive to your growth or their growth. So sometimes you got to realize that you're an average of those you spend most of your time with. And that comes with things that you spend your money on, how much money you make a year. It comes down to how you form your habits and even the words you say. Some people buy endless amounts of bottled water while others buy Brita filters. And in my book, both of those are just fine because honestly, bottled water doesn't cost that much when you really think about it. But my thing is this, I don't like carrying big packs of bottled water all the way up to the top floor where I live at and then drink all of it and then dispose of the plastic bottles of water. I mean, it's just, it's a pain. Have you ever been to somebody's house and they just have a bunch of empty water bottles everywhere? I don't like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Brita filters are just much easier to deal with in my opinion. Like you, you only change the filter out every six months, so twice a year. And you know, you, the, when you pour your tap water into it, the water comes out tasting just as good as bottled water. That's really all bottled water is anyways. Hey, don't shoot the messenger, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I found that the average person spends over $100 a year on bottled water, and again, that's really not that much money, but then I thought about this. You know, that's just the average person we're talking about. What about the average families who spend $200 to $400 on bottled water every single year? Something else I think about is whenever I hear somebody say how they wish they made more money, it's never like an insane amount they need or want to have. Like, Basically what I'm getting at here is an extra $400 a month can literally change most people's lives. And what I think about is, you know, that extra $400 you want to make, that's how you start it. By saving what you can save by not spending money on stuff like bottled water. Like if it can save you hundreds of dollars a year, that's how you incrementally save hundreds of dollars a month. That's how you get started with the extra $400 that you want to, to make a month. A great way to start that is by looking at what I'm talking about in this video. It's about saving your first 10, 50, $100 a month. That's how you get started towards your extra $400 a month right there. And as you can see, it hasn't had a negative impact on my life. I don't feel like I've missed out on anything. In fact, I would argue and say that these things have improved my life. Like I said earlier, I go to the gym a lot and something I like to bring with me is my water bottle and I take it to work with me. I take it pretty much everywhere I go and it's almost always filled with cold water at all times. Having that water bottle with me most of the time keeps me from spending money on bottled water and even other drinks like Gatorades or even sodas. Because at least for me, if I already have something to drink with me, I'm not going to go out of my way to buy anything else. I'm just not. I don't think this saves me any more money than the Brita filter itself saves me, but I do think that the water bottle saves me money in ways that the Brita filter can't, if that makes sense. Like, if I want to fill my water bottle up for free when I'm not home, I can totally do that. Whether I'm at, I'm at work or if I'm at the gym or if I'm even at a restaurant, I can fill my water bottle up for free without having to worry about anything or going all the way back home to get my Brita filter and pour some water in there. You know what I'm saying? So my Brita filter saves me money while I'm home and my water bottle saves me money while I'm in and out of the house. So the title of this video says, Things I Bought That Saved Me An Extra $2,000 A Year. So let's do a quick recap and add up everything so we can see how much I save. So the barbershop equipment easily saves me $480 a year. When you consider the fact that I used to go to the barbershop twice every single month and pay $20 each time, over the course of a year, that's easily well over $480, but we're going with minimums here. I'm not even factoring gas. That's how much it saved me. But I will say this, 
my barbershop equipment cost me four hundred and seventy dollars. So within being that it's only literally been a year, it's only saved me ten dollars. The blender saves me $336 a year because I don't drink smoothies and protein shakes as much as I used to, but I do have one at least once a week. The cookware I was talking about, that saves me $1,200 a year at least because I know for a fact I would be spending well over $100 a month on fast food or just eating out in general if I didn't have this cookware and wasn't cooking most of my meals. Of course, I slip up every now and then and get myself a Chick-fil-A sandwich or something like that, but that's maybe a couple times a month, and that's totally accounted for in my budget. It's not like I used to be when I used to spend like 20 days out of the month eating fast food. The streaming services, and this is with them combined, mind you. This isn't even including the fact that I only pay for one. This is just, if you were to combine them, that saves me $660 a year or $55 a month. Now, if I combine the water bottle and the Brita filter together, I would say that it saves me well over $125 a year because y'all just don't know. I go through some water. Add all that up and that's $2,296, so basically $2,300. The whole point of this video is to show you what I've done to control some of my unnecessary spending. And I want you to see that even though some of these seemed really small and insignificant over the course of you know me explaining it, as you can see from the end, it all added up to over $2,000 a year. And this is just extra money on top of what I was already saving, right? So, and this was with very little effort, like literally just with me using the items that I'm talking about in this video, that's how I was able to save that $2,300 last year. Which is pretty much my way of saying I saved an extra $2,300 last year without really even trying, without really making any sacrifices, just living my life the same way I pretty much have been, just by making small adjustments. And you can do the same exact thing. You have to look at what you spend money the most on and see how you can minimize that. And sometimes that might mean you, you need to buy something that prevents you from doing something else like I did in my many examples. It's, it may not be exactly like what my list is, but you can watch a bunch of these videos on YouTube where people talk about how they cut their expenses simply by buying something that is worth a while. And it might be a little more expensive, you know, but don't let the mindset of saving discourage you from buying things that are more expensive if you know that paying that premium price is going to add more value to your life in the long run. That's the biggest thing I want you to get from this video. Anyways, that's a video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.